Do you feel it in the air? Do you see it? Do you feel those autumn summers? That crisp, crisp, you know, wind flowing. It's hot right now, but that crisp wind is going to start flowing. The tears, the joy, the other sadness, and all sorts of different emotions will come once again. And it's time, once again, to talk college football. Obviously, first things first, we have a lot of big storylines going into the season. You know, once again, my name is Big Boy Sports. If you're watching for the first time, I've been covering college football for about a couple years now. This will be, I believe this will be the third year that I cover the, the, um, the NCAA, you know, the FBS, and a little bit of FCS on the side, you know, a little bit, just a little bit on the side, but mostly, you know, 99% of the time it will be FBS football. And if you're wondering, if you're wondering, Coach Spo, the um, the um, the um, the uh, what do they call it? The preseason rankings. Yeah, yeah, the preseason rankings come out, come out for this year. There's a lot of stuff in there that needs to be unpacked. So we're gonna get into that in a moment, but I want to talk about some new things. So I'm gonna add to these videos to give a little bit of a flair to them. Hopefully, I can put like some editing software or something like this. Do some edits in these videos to make them a lot more smooth for y'all. So, I mean, I know some of y'all have complained about that. So, we're going to do that. Uh, but for right now, I'm not going to be doing anything like that. Um, I will do it at my discretion. You know, that's going to be the first thing. Second thing is the six to C, pulling up six fingers. So the six to see will be my six top games for each week, and it's gonna start week zero. We're, we're gonna start this week zero. The week zero video will be coming next week, obviously, because week zero is in two weeks. So you know you'll get that next Monday or Tuesday or whenever. You know, it won't be like a Thursday night or nothing like that. It'll be probably a Monday. That's usually when I drop these videos anyway for college football. That's just how it's been for the last couple years. Third thing is don't don't really expect too many major predictions from this channel. Don't expect those. I'm not that type of guy. You know, I have been proven wrong of a lot of things. I'm no expert on anything. So, you know, I already don't I already don't have the expert, you know, fancy schmancy technology. All I have is a Chromebook that I'm recording this from. So I ain't got no money. <laughs> I don't have money for all that. Uh, but you know, you never know. You never know what could happen. So give me a second. I'll, I'll tell you about this coach's poll real quick and give you a little bit of a preview. A little bit of a preview. Not too much of a preview. I'll also tell you some things about, you know, what do I think is going to win the Heisman, who's going to the CFP, you know, yada, 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 all that good stuff. So I'll give you a second. You'll give me a second. Let me go gather some information here. So, who's coming in at number one? Who's coming in at number one to start off the season? Well, it's pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. You already know who it is. Number one, number two, who they are. First, obviously, is the defending national champions, the Alabama Crimson Tide. A lot of people's favorite to win it all once again. And right behind them is the number two Clemson Tigers, the ACC champions for like five or six years now. Both these teams are bringing in new quarterbacks. Alabama's bringing in Bryce Young, you know, who's got his whole, you know, NIL deal. Remember, the NIL is a thing now, so players can make money off of whatever they want. You know, advertising, scholarships, and, you know, all that stuff. Images, likeness, blah, blah, blah. You know, and that was... A Definitely needed. Definitely needed stuff. But, you know, the challenge for the fact of Bryce Young coming in, you know, I think he, he doesn't have, you know, didn't have the weapons that he does last year. Obviously, he still has Mechie, but, you know, the weapons for, from last year were just so, just so good for Bama. Really, really good. And, you know, they're losing a lot of guys, but they're getting back a lot of guys as well. You know, I mean, this is Alabama. They reload. Same thing with Clemson. They have DJ Uilagalele, who started in one huge game last year against Notre Dame. And he did well. He did very well. But ultimately, in the end, he lost it. He and Clemson lost that game to Notre Dame. 
but this year it's going to be a bigger test for him because he's got to start out with another team that we'll talk about in a moment. But Alabama and Clemson seem to be hands-on favorites. They're my first two picks for the college football playoff. They're my first two picks. That, that's, that, I mean, it's just, it, it, it just is what it is, man. I mean, I, I can't even blame people enough. You know, I don't really know at this point. I don't really know at this point. You know, who can stop Alabama and Clemson? Who can stop Alabama and Clemson? Somebody's got to stop them. But next up is at number three those Oklahoma Sooners, those dreaded Oklahoma Sooners, who, along with someone else, is moving to the SEC. Probably not in 2025, but sooner. Ha! Huh, did you get that? <laughs> sooner. Um, there's a guy named Spencer Rattler, who's one of the favorites, and my pick personally to win the Heisman Trophy this year. I think he, Rattler will throw 50 touchdowns. <laughs> But in the last year, the concern for Oklahoma was the offensive line. Was the defense? Defense did great. Last year, the concern was the offensive line. You know, could that be that needs to be rectified a little bit better this year because they got you know they got two losses that weren't supposed to happen. But you know, they still won the Big Twelve. They won the Big Twelve. I mean, hey, you can't say enough about that. They won the Big Twelve even with two losses. So the D. But Lincoln have Riley has to get it back. They have to get that swagger back. You know, they had a lot of momentum going in to this year because they won, you know, however many games straight at the end of the last year. And Spencer Rattler's looking kind of, you know, again, he's looking like the favorite. He's my favorite to win the Heisman. So the only real thing for Oklahoma is offensive line. I think that might be some trouble. Oklahoma does also have some, you know, they, they look like they have some depth. You know, they haven't really looked in completely into Oklahoma yet. We'll see what they can do. The first time I will see them is, I believe it will be September the 11th. Or was it the 4th? Um, I, don't, I don't remember because they have a road game against Tulane. So we'll see what they can do. You know, you know but I think you know Oklahoma will be a team that will be in contention, and I think they might have enough in the tank to make it to the college football playoff. Number four on this list is the Georgia Bulldogs. JT Daniels. JT. Yo, what up, big guy? You're back. You're back in the saddle at Georgia, and you're trying to come over the hump, you know, you're trying to come over the hump of losing the SEC championship, you know, however many times to Alabama, you know, as far as the Georgia Bulldogs concerned, not JT Daniels. And Georgia's also a team that had a lot of momentum after losing a couple times last year. A lot of momentum going in, you know, from winning s several games in a row, getting hot when they needed to, when they need to get that spark back. But their biggest test will come early. One of their biggest tests will come early. In fact, it will be the first game of the season. It will be number two versus number four. You know, Clemson, Georgia, in the Dukes Mayo Classic. And, uh, Whoever loses this game, in all honesty, will not go to the college football playoff. And I'm predicting that Georgia will lose this game. They will not go to the college football playoff. So, that's, that's, that's a prediction right there. It's not a spoiler. It's a prediction. But I think, you know, Georgia has the tools they can make it to the college football playoff. But I think they still can. I just don't think they will. A team that has been rated as number five that has been kind of weird to me is the Iowa State Cyclones. Oh yes, the Cyclones, they got Brock Purdy back. Uh, Matt Campbell is just doing what has been building. He's been building up a program out in Cyclone Nation. Building up a good program that won, you know, um, many games last year. Could not, could not win when it counted, though, in the Big 12 Championship. And lost out on a chance to get into the college football playoff. Had they won the Big 12 championship, I think they would have gotten in as a two-loss team, I believe. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the Cyclones could do, you know, other than beat the other Big 12 teams, especially Oklahoma. Now, Iowa State's got some big matchups this year. Obviously, Oklahoma's going to be a big one. Can they beat Oklahoma? That's really the biggest question here for the Cyclones. Can they win the Big 12 championship? 
because it's going to be some other teams that we'll talk about here that are in the race for that Big 12 title. Uh, next up is Ohio State at number six. Yeah, they were, yeah, yeah, a very, very weird time for the Buckeyes, but I mean, they, they once again are pretty much near the top. I don't think, you know, they deserve to be number six, so I think they will be, you know, one of those teams that are in contention for a college football playoff spot. I think they will make it. They just got to figure out their quarterback situation, though. They really got to figure it out. Um, who is even going to be the quarterback, though? Is it going to be a guy that, um, C.J. Stroud? Is it going to be him? Is it going to be him? Or is it going to be somebody else? I don't know. I really don't know who the quarterback is going to be for the Buckeyes. But, you know, after losing in the national championship the way they did against Alabama, I think they're prime for something new. I think they're going to need something. But I don't know what it is going to be yet. You know, they start with, the, you know, Obviously, uh, I believe it's like a filler game, but they have a big game against Oregon that next week. So, you know. Oh, wait, they start against Minnesota. That's Minnesota. They're, it's, come on now. That's not the Minnesota for 2019. It's the Minnesota for 2020. So, you know. But Ohio State, they, 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 can, they, can, they can obviously do what they want. You know, the Big Ten. You know, just caving in to whatever they demand. So... We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll see what happens with the Buckeyes this year. It's going to be a lot. Number seven, another team that is, you know, looking to get into the college football playoff. But I don't think they will. Again, one of the biggest tests for Alabama this year will be the Texas A&M Aggies. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo. What are you doing? What are you doing? Because you, know, you don't have a quarterback. You don't have Kalamon no more. Who are you going to use now, Jimbo? Who are you going to use? You tell me. Biggest question for the Aggies. And I wonder, you know, how are they going to match up against Alabama early in the season in October? Which will probably be a night game, by the way, at Kyle Field. I wonder, how are they going to match that up? Um, number eight in the poll is the early poll is those Cincinnati Bearcats, another team that I think could potentially make the college football playoff. I know I said Bama, uh, Clemson, Oklahoma, and Ohio State, but I think you know another team to really keep our eyes on you know, alongside Georgia is the Cincinnati Bearcats. I think this team could run the table. I don't think Notre Dame, which we'll talk about, is as good as last year. I don't think Indiana was good at all last year. They were very mediocre. So I don't even know what, what the polls are smoking. You know, I mean, they were pretty much a mediocre team, just kind of there, and they, and they really got blasted by Ohio State. But well, that's not. That's not. We're not talking about. We're not talking about the, um, Indiana right now. We're talking about Cincinnati. So, Luke Fickle, you know, you know how, how how in the world. How in the world are these Bearcats going to do? You know now they still have Desmond Ritter. They still have him at quarterback, though. You know, you know I mean, I mean, Ritter was a menace. We're talking a menace to society late last year. Several Cincinnati games I watched last year. Ritter was a menace, running, passing, did whatever he wanted on that field. You know, so. Cincinnati's got a lot of upside, but a tough, a, a much tougher American Conference this year, I think, will could potentially do them in, you know, if the, if they lose, you know, if they lose to Notre Dame or Indiana, that will obviously, you know, put them out of their misery for a college football playoff spot. But other than that, I think, I really, really think that Cincinnati has a great shot at a college football playoff spot. So what about those Pac-12 teams? What about Pac-12, baby? Oregon. Yo. What up, Oregon? Yeah, they're not going to beat Ohio State. I don't think they're going to beat Ohio State. Bunch of players. Oh, bunch of players. They're gone. They're gone. Anthony Brown from Boston College. Boston College wasn't that good last year. Anthony Brown wasn't really that good in like one or two games that I watched him play. Wasn't that great? So I wonder, 
What are the ducks gonna do, Mario Cristobal? What are you gonna do, brother? What are you gonna do? You're at number nine in the early poll. I don't know what I was doing at number ten. I was perennially, uh, always eight and four, not perennially. I, I got it right this time. They're, they're always an eight and four type team. It was six and two last year, but they're, I mean, it's Iowa. So they're always a team that's gonna be like there, but not all the way there. Unlike, you know, a couple years back when they were 12 and one. But I don't know what this team is gonna do. I don't know what's, I don't know what this team is gonna do, you know. Um. They got a lot of guys. They got a lot of guys, you know, on offense and defensive sides. You know, you know, again, you know, Ference still, you know, runs a um, a West Coasty type offense. You know, he still runs, you know, with the I formation stuff like that. And you figure the Iowa Iowa State game is going to be a top ten matchup. You know, heading in early, you know, September. You you figure. I don't know how I was going to do, in all honesty. The Big Ten is a tough, tough road. You know, and, you know, a lot of question marks, again, with a lot of these teams. There's a lot of these teams that do have question marks here. I really don't know, you know, what Iowa can do to keep themselves in, you know, because they're definitely not a, they're definitely not a top ten team. They're definitely somebody smoking. LSU, another team that was not good last year. Not good at all last year. Ed Ogeron was not coaching at his best level. This was not Joe Burrow, you know, at quarterback last year. It was, it was a guy by the name of Miles Brennan, you know. He was he was all right. Brennan was all right. He had flashes, and I don't think he did enough last year. So LSU was at number 11. Number 12 is those Miami Hurricanes. Desperately, desperately, they're going to need De'Ara King to do what they need to do. You know, he's back, you know. King is back, and he had some flashes until Miami lost a couple games last year. He had some flashes, but ultimately, the Hurricanes couldn't even get that last game that they needed in at Hope for Clemson and Notre Dame to lose because the ACC messed that up. You know, said, you know, we're not we're not doing all that, and Miami got blasted by North Carolina, I believe that that game anyway last year. I don't think Miami's going to be enough to challenge the Clemson Tigers. I think it will be somebody else going to the ACC championship game. Yeah. We'll talk about them after we talk about Notre Dame. Because Notre Dame loses a lot. They lose a lot of guys. My goodness. Ian Book, gone. Who, who's going to replace him? Jack Cohn? Who's going to replace him? Was a damn good quarterback Ian Book was. He led the Irish to a couple playoff spots, I believe. Was it two? Or was it just one? I think it was two. And, you know, Brian Kelly, you know, does Brian Kelly things. You know, I think the Irish aren't going to be as good as last year. I think they will step back a lot. Like, they still have some tough games, though. But it's a get. But one of those against. One of those games is going to be against the next team on this list here, and that is the North Carolina Tar Heels. Oh, Mac Brown, my old coach, my old friend, Mac Brown, from my Texas days. You know, you know, from my Texas Longhorn, being a super fan of the Longhorns days, you know, and being happy about it. Being happy and being a Longhorns fan. That was what Mac Brown provided. And what he's providing out in North Carolina now is happiness and a sense of hope. And he's got Sam Howell back. Potential Heisman candidate. Potential Heisman Trophy winner. Who I think can throw 50 touchdowns as well. Obviously, um, North Carolina lost a couple backs last year. Carter and Williams. So, you know, you wonder. You wonder. You wonder what they're going to do now at the running back position. Because those two guys ran for like, what, 2,400 yards last year? So, Either the Howell's going to have to step up completely and throw even more, or somebody's going to have to pick up the slack in the backfield. You never know. But though today in North Carolina will have a big game, um, North Carolina's really o only real test besides, you know, Notre Dame Miami is themselves. You know, if they trip up in those two games, you know, they won't be going to the ACC Championship. I believe they will take on Clemson in the ACC Championship. I believe North Carolina will 
give Clemson a fight. Now, you know, again, it's just speculation right now. Could be Miami. You never know. Um, Wisconsin and Indiana, both these teams I kind of lump together. They're not, they're all right. Again, Indiana was not that great last year. Kind of an overinflated record. Wisconsin also not that great. And they have, they really only have one of the only few games of the week of September the 25th against Notre Dame. That's going to be really interesting. But other than that, that week is not going to be very interesting. You know, I don't think. Um, but Wisconsin, you know, they you, you know, the same old Wisconsin stuff. You know, same they're the same team as Iowa, but they just run a little bit more. I think, you know, Iowa's a bit more balanced, but I think Wisconsin's you know a team that can run the ball, stuff like that. Indiana, you know, they they don't, they they don't have you know everything. You know, I don't think Indiana has it all, but they do have Penix Jr. coming back. You know. And, I mean, it's just going to be interesting to see how in the world, you know, if Indiana can, you know, maybe stay with Ohio State this time. Can they stick around and keep themselves really, really close? Not close, really, really close. And win. they got to beat Ohio State. Um, next up is Florida. Florida lost their playoff chances off of a shoe being thrown. That's pretty much all that needs to be said about Florida. But Dan Mullen, you know... Did not have the best momentum coming in to the end of that, 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 that 2020 season. Did not have the best momentum. First, it was a shoe throw that ended their season, ended their chances to the college football playoff spot. Then they got beat by Alabama. Then they got boat raced by Oklahoma. And I don't think this team deserves to be at number 17. But here we are, you know, here we are anyway. So something's got to give, you know. I don't know if they can beat Georgia this year. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know if they can beat Bama either. I really don't. But Florida could, you know, hang around with both of them and maybe potentially beat them. You know, you never know. Next up on the list is Steve Sarkeesian. That's right. Sark and the Horns. The Texas Longhorns. Who are also leaving for the SEC. And now, you know, this year is going to be another year to test most Texas fans' patience. I'm not really about, you know, going crazy, you know, over firing Herman like that. I did go a little crazy. I will admit that because, I mean, Herman just did not produce with the recruits that we that he had. Just did not produce. I mean, it, it was a legitimate argument. He didn't produce with the recruits he had. He was having top ten recruiting classes and not producing with them. And he, and he just ran the same plays over and over again. We're talking screen, inside zone, Sam Ellinger run, deep shot. That's not a recipe for success. You have to be creative. And I think Steve Sarkeesian, who did things creatively with Alabama, and that's why Alabama was so damn good when they were scoring the lights off of people the last couple of years. But do I think Texas will get to the college football playoff this year? No. Do I think Texas will win, you know, a lot of games this year? Yes, I think they will win at least 10. 8 to 10 games this year. I know, I know. Uh, there's always a chance that the Longhorns lay a complete egg, you know. You never know when it could happen. They have a game against Louisiana, uh, but we'll talk about those raging Cajuns later. That could be a big no-no, a trip-up. And that could be a potential loss right there. So, but they got to feed the ball to big man, Bijan Robinson. That's a big man right there, and I know he's going to be running all over the field this year. I know he's going to be running. And I don't even know who the quarterback's going to be for the Longhorns. I just know that Robinson's going to be running up and down the field, going to win that Walter Camp, hopefully, you know. Or who, what's the running back award again? I don't know what the running back award is. He's going to win that running back award. I will say that. I will say that. B. John Robinson for whatever the running back award is in college football. Got to win that. So he'll be running all over. Um, Next up is, oh, my, Coastal Carolina. Oh, my, Sun Belt representation in 
in the uh, preseason polls. Now, I don't think Coastal Carolina will be as good as last year. They have one of the worst schedules in college football, um, and they avoid the Raging Cajuns again this year. But I, I don't think this team will stick around in the top 25 very long. I think their season will end early. You know, with a loss somewhere early down the line. I don't think this team, you know, is gonna go to a New Year's Six. I don't think this team will go to a New Year's Six game. I think that title will go to either Cincinnati or someone else. We'll talk about, you know, a couple other teams we'll talk about here. Um, Ole Miss. How about those Lane Kiffins, the Fighting Lane Kiffins? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really high on Ole Miss. I don't think they're really going to be in the top 25 for very long either. Uh, they're probably going to get out of here in that top 25, you know, as soon as week one hits. You know, so whenever they play their first non-conference game against, like, a Power 5 team, I think that's when they're going to get, you know, completely knocked out of this top 25. And it's just, I just don't really have high hopes as for Lane Kiffin as a head coach. I think he's better suited when he's, you know, doing offensive plays and stuff like that. I think he's just better suited for that stuff. I just don't think he's that great of a coach. Penn State, oh, they, oh, they went bad last year. They, they were down horrendous last year. I don't know what happened to them last year. They just, they just weren't good. You know, with all these injuries, you know, losses that were bad. I, I just don't think. You know, I just don't think they could do it. They have, you know, good old OC from Texas, Mike Urich. I don't like that guy. I remember. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was kind of right. But I'm telling you, Penn State fans, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be run, inside zone, screen, long pass, quarterback run. I don't even know who Penn State's quarterback is going to be this year, honestly. Who's, it, who's, gonna be, who's that going to be? I don't think Penn State's going to be in this poll very long either. I don't think you know, they're going to match up very well against Ohio State. Not at all. Washington's another team, you know, that's kind of weird. Uh, they got a guy named Dylan Morris, a quarterback. This also could be Sam Heward, you know. could also He could also be quarterback. Washington's not really a team that I'm going to keep an eye on this year. Unless the Pac-12 actually comes back and becomes good. The Pac-12 is hinging their hopes on Oregon and potentially USC. They're going to potentially, they're going to, they're going to hold out USC. Arizona State, kind of a weird team to put in this preseason top 25. I don't think they're the top 25 team either. There's been some stuff going on with them this offseason as well. You know, you got to be firm for Herm, but we're not firm for Herm if they're going to be in this top 25. Not not now. I think Arizona State's going to be a scrappy team in the Pac-12, but I don't think they're going to be at this poll very long either. USC, though, USC has to get something going. They have to get it going. Keaton Slovis, damn good quarterback. He did great last year until they got tripped up in the Pac-12 championship game and lost the second game. Or, no, wait, they only lost that one game. They lost that one game. You know, USC kept it way too close for teams last year. They kept it way too close, and it didn't work out. It did not work out for them at all. So they need to get better on defense, especially. You know, and hopefully they do. You know, with Slovis back at quarterback, I think things will be fine for USC. They got to get to the Pac-12 championship at, you know, and, you know, hopefully they take on Oregon again, you know, and it will be a great game on a Friday night. Last team in the top 25 is, again, those Louisiana Raging Cajuns who could trip up my Texas Longhorns. I'm not even going to lie to you. I think this team has a lot, you know, they have a lot of potential. They could be one of those group of five teams that could potentially earn a spot in the New Year's Six, and they are riding high off a of great momentum last year. If they can, if they can beat Texas, because I believe they have a lot of guys returning. You know, I, I, first of all, I'll be sad for my long cords losing like that. But second of all, Louisiana is going to be in for a great run, and it could potentially lead to a Sub Belt Championship game that could be, you know, even more fun than it was. You know, that it that it could have been last year because it could have been fun last year. But I don't think. I don't think we expected 
the cancellation for a championship. Man, I wanted that championship. I think we might get it this year. I think we might get it. I think Coastal Carolina will lose a game or two, but I think Louisiana may have just one loss, maybe none, in all honesty. I don't know. I do not know. You know, I don't watch the Sun Belt a lot, but the Sun Belt is a much better conference than it was the last couple of years. Because you know, the last couple of years, you know, they've been kind of they've been kind of perceived as a basement dweller, when in reality that's Conference USA. Uh, but yeah, Sun Belt is riding high. They have a lot of momentum. They have a lot of new TV stuff. You know, TV inventory. You know, actual games on ESPN and not ESPN Plus. Or worse, Facebook. Or worse, Stadium. Or worse, CBS Sports Network. See, see Conference USA. You could do something. You know, do something nice for my alma mater. You know, North Texas. Go to ESPN Plus. You know, instead of like you know, having a lot of games like ESPN Three, where nobody can see them or something like that. Or again, those other places that I just mentioned. But yeah. That's the preseason top 25. Um, again, a lot of these teams I don't really have thoughts on because, I mean, I just don't think they're really top 25 teams. I don't even think they're top 15 teams. Um, but, yeah, I think, think in all honesty that the playoffs will be, you know, Alabama, Clemson, uh, Oklahoma, and Ohio State. I know that's kind of a, it's kind of a weird, you know, way to say, oh, this is the same four teams that it's been forever. You know for a while now but I mean I just don't really know you know I don't really know I, they, I could be thrown for a complete surprise North Carolina could easily you know just say hey what up we're in the college football playoff we, we beat Clemson we we did what we need to do same thing with Texas yo what up we beat Iowa State and Oklahoma and we got past the tricky games we're in yo what's up Cincinnati same thing yo we beat Indiana and Notre Dame oh and we beat UCF and a bunch of other teams in the American. Yo, what up? Let's go. Let's do this. Could could be a lot of teams. There's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be competing for that four spots this year. And if you think the college football playoffs going to expand to 12, like we all thought it was going to, I think it still might have a chance. And I just don't really want that. A lot of people in the comment section of these videos say they don't want it either. Um, yeah, what do y'all think? Um, if you have, if you have, if you're a fan of one of these teams that I've named off for this top 25, you know, just go on ahead and just say something about them. You know, like Washington or Arizona State. You know, have some more thoughts than I could because I mean, again, I haven't really been focusing too much in college football, as you can see on this channel the past few months. So, you know, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I gotta say. So, just to summarize real quick: Heisman winner. Gonna be Spencer Rattler. Playoff picks: Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma. Of course, there was some other awards that I named off as well, but I think it's for other players. It's 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 nothing compared to the Heisman Trophy and the College Football Playoff. It's not all those other awards and stuff like that. But you know, Group of Five Playoff or rather um, New Year's Bowl will either go to Cincinnati or Louisiana. It will either be one of those two. I don't think it will be close to Carolina. And, you know, again, it's just going to be one hell of a season. I'm ready for another season. I'm ready. Week zero can't come soon enough because there is going to be one big matchup, you know, on that week that everybody needs to be talking about. And it's not an FBS matchup. It's not. It's something else. It's for, it's for those black schools. So, um, but we'll, talk about, we'll talk about week zero when we get there. But that's going to do it for this video. It's a long one, so I hope you stick around to the end to like, share, comment, subscribe, and, you know, just click the notification bell, get those notifications and stuff like that, and all that good stuff. And I will see you again very, very soon when we talk college football. You know, forget about the ACC, Big Ten, and uh, Pac-12 Alliance thing. Let's talk some college football in reality. Whatever that other nonsense was, is just speculation. Let's talk reality. See you in week zero, everybody. Take care.